creature might be producing it. It means a roach can tell exactly where a predator is, and when it's a good idea to move. Giant nerve fibers from the cerky run straight to the leg's control centers, so the roach doesn't even have to think about escaping. Such elegant and economical designs have attracted the attention of space engineers, designing the next generation of remote planetary explorers. So perhaps future missions to Mars might be carried out by rovers fitted with an array of sensors inspired by insects. Scientists have already made progress in copying these air current detectors, which might be useful devices for a Mars rover. Whirlwinds have been recorded on the Martian surface, powerful enough to destroy a rover. But equipped with the roach's ability to detect strength and direction of air currents, it should be able to steer clear of trouble. Some insects can also pinpoint sound with the same deadly accuracy. This is a female Ormia fly, and she needs to find food for her offspring. They only eat mole crickets. So Ormia's problem is to find one. Male mole crickets sit in the entrance to their burrows, often head down, and sing. And Ormia can tell exactly where the sound is coming from. Once she's found a mole cricket, she lays her eggs on it. And when her larvae hatch, they will burrow into the mole cricket and slowly devour it. It's an impressive feat, but just how accurate is a female Ormia? These scientists at Cornell University are trying to answer that question. An Ormia fly is lowered onto a ball, supported on a cushion of air. When synthesized cricket song is played from the speaker, the fly will try to run towards it, turning the ball. The ball is linked to a computer, which works out in which direction the fly is trying to run and how far it goes in response to the song. The experiments show that Ormias can pinpoint sound with unerring accuracy. Alternating the sound between two speakers either side of the fly doesn't fool her. Ormia gets it right every time. So how is she doing this? An Ormia fly has very unusual ears hidden beneath her head. They're made of two membranes either side of a stiff bar. A mole cricket song makes each membrane vibrate. But if the sound is coming from one side, it reaches one membrane first and causes them to vibrate out of phase. The vibrations of both sides are transmitted to the central bar and by decoding how this is being distorted, the fly can tell exactly where the sound is coming from. Based on this elegant system, scientists have developed a highly directional microphone, which looks like being a major step forward in the design of hearing aids. All thanks to this tiny fly and her search for food for her offspring.
To be a model parent, this smoke beetle depends on an even more unusual sensor. At the base of its thorax, it has some very strange structures, sense organs. But for what? In the laboratories of the University of Bonn, careful experiments show that these structures respond to infrared radiation, to heat. And they're highly sensitive. Outside the lab, it uses these unusual organs to detect forest fires. The lab experiments suggest that a beetle can detect the heat from a 10 hectare forest fire up to 12 kilometers away. And the beetle can also pinpoint the exact direction of the blaze. Beetles are drawn from a wide area to the smoldering logs, and it's here that they find their partners and mate. When their young hatch, they burrow into pine wood. But in a healthy pine tree, the larvae would be killed and entombed in resin as the tree defends itself. But by laying their eggs on recently killed trees, these beetles save their offspring from that fate. Scientists are now looking closely at this extraordinary ability, thinking about making our own heat detectors more effective. When it comes to finding the way, Nothing beats the honeybee. A worker bee returning to the hive from a good source of nectar can remember the distance between the hive and the flowers and in what direction it lies. With that information, she can always find her way back again. But she can also tell her sisters how to find the same flowers. Encoded in this waggle dance is information on both the distance and the direction. And all that is going on in a brain smaller than a grain of sugar. Such navigation skills would be extremely useful for robots, particularly those exploring alien planets on their own. So how does a bee do it? Scientists at the Australian National University in Canberra designed an ingenious experiment to find out. They persuaded bees to fly down a long tunnel, lined with black stripes, to a dish of sugar water. These bees then flew back to the hive and told their fellow workers about this new all-you-can-eat food joint. But then the researchers replaced the stripes with much narrower ones. This time, when the bees flew back to the hive to gather more workers, the new recruits flew straight past the tunnel. They'd been told the wrong distance. Bees, it seems, are using a trick called optic flow to measure distance. They estimate distance by the flow of information across the eyes. When the bees fly past more, narrower stripes, their optic flow system is fooled into thinking they've flown further than they have. This system has all kinds of uses. 
By keeping the flow rates equal on both eyes, the bee knows it's flying down the center of the tunnel. And on final approach to the hive, a bee uses optic flow as a kind of autopilot to slow it down, ready for landing. Most flying insects seem to use a similar system. So scientists at Caltech, the California Institute of Technology, have devised a computerized system to look in more detail at how insects navigate. For this, they've enlisted the help of the classic lab insect, the fruit fly. In this experiment, fruit flies are released into a wind tunnel. The scientists then project moving bars onto the wall of the wind tunnel and infrared sensors track how each fly responds. They found that the flies always turn to fly away from this pattern of diverging bars. But to understand exactly what is happening means looking in more detail at how individual flies respond. So the Caltech scientists built a kind of fruit fly flight simulator. A single fly is tethered inside a cylinder, which can generate different patterns, right around the fly. By monitoring its wing beats, the scientists can tell what the fly is trying to do when it sees different patterns. If the pattern's rotating, the fly tries to turn in the opposite direction. This would automatically compensate for it being twisted by a gust of wind if the fly was in free flight. If the pattern is expanding on one side, the fly tries to move away from it. Again, in free flight, this would automatically compensate for a constant wind blowing the fly to one side. In other words, these simple built-in programs act like an autopilot that keeps the fly stable and on course. It's such an effective and elegant system that future Mars rovers might well use the same tricks to measure how far they're traveling. And at the same time, navigate through difficult terrain on the Martian surface. And this is not the end of an insect-inspired space age. Another thing insects do very well is work together. Wood ants live in enormous colonies that scour the forest floor around their nests for anything small enough to eat. If they find a particularly good source of food, more workers can be recruited to help just like honeybees. And back at home, the ants cooperate to maintain the thatched roof over the nest to keep it waterproof. And by opening and closing entrance holes around the nest, they keep the temperature and humidity at the right levels for their growing larvae. But no single ant has a master plan in its head a grand overview of what the colony is trying to achieve. This apparently cooperative society emerges out of each individual ant following a few simple rules. Such simple programs leading to the completion of complex tasks has inspired robot designers to build robots that can work together in a similar way. These robots at the University of the West of England have been designed to test these ideas. They can pick up discs, move them around, and drop them. But they've also been programmed with a few simple rules. First, if you bump into a disc, pick it up. Second, if you bump into a wall or another robot, turn around. Third, if you bump into a disc 